Hello everyone, Justin with Deep Dive Stocks here, and today we're going to be taking a dive into Deep Dive Stocks' new metric LDPM, or Liquidity Dependent Price Movement. It's a pretty interesting metric. It's new. I'm not, I don't know too many other metrics on the market, if any, that do something similar and with such efficacy. And today we're going to just quickly go over what it is, what it measures, and then look at some examples of how to use LDPM in the wild. So let's go ahead and get started. LDPM, or Liquidity Dependent Price Movement, is designed to measure if a current price movement on a stock is being supported by good liquidity or if it's being forced by poor liquidity. This may be a strange idea to some as there aren't that many or any liquidity metrics on the market, but the idea is that good liquidity means things are moving smoothly and poor liquidity means things are not moving smoothly. So if we see a price action on a stock that has good liquidity, then we know that the bid and the ask are cooperating with each other and they're both happy with how things are moving. If, however, we see price movement with poor liquidity, then we know that either the bid or the ask is forcing that transaction, and that can involve some larger than expected price movements, extreme downsides, and some other fun things that we'll get into later. So measuring liquidity on a stock especially intraday and in real time, can be very beneficial to understanding how the two parties, the bid and the ask, are cooperating or not cooperating with each other. That's a pretty high level view of LDPM. And if you would like some more information or to get a little bit more into the details, I'll link below the LDPM primer that goes into a whole bunch of stuff, including some nerdy math stuff and examples. But for now, Let's quickly just look at LDPM and take a high level view on how to use it in real time. The first thing we should go over is how LDPM presents on a chart. For this example, I'm using GME on the four hours as it looks on TradingView. We see that there are two lines with LDPM. There's LDPM granular and LDPM smooth. Granular is the teal line and smooth is the purple line. LDPM granular is named granular because it's a bit more sensitive to the exact moment by moment changes in liquidity that a stock is experiencing. We'll see this later when we look at some live examples. LDPM smooth is smooth or it's the running average of the LDPM granular and you can set that interval on your own preferences as well. Personally, I like to use seven as I think it is a good balance between being sensitive to the changes in LDPM granular without losing too much of the stability that using a smooth value gives you. The benefit of having both LDPM granular and LDPM smooth on the chart is that it gives you a sense of how the overall liquidity status is via LDPM smooth versus if liquidity is improving or deteriorating on a moment by moment basis, which is what LDPM granular is really good at telling us. How to interpret LDPM is pretty straightforward. We simply look to see if the price is above or below LDPM, and then we also look to see if LDPM is moving away from or towards the price. So for instance, here on GME, we see that LDPM smooth is below the price, which is bullish. However, LDPM granular is above the price and it's moving away from the price. This means that liquidity on, the, on this specific interval is bad, and it's getting worse because LDPM is moving away from the price. Also notice that LDPM smooth is moving up towards the price as well. This means that LDPM smooth is also indicating that the overall liquidity for GME is beginning to deteriorate. If the price and LDPM smooth cross over, that means that both LDPM granular and LDPM smooth will be above the price, which is a pretty bearish finding. So there are four orientations for how LDPM can be oriented with relations to the price, depending on if both are above the price, both are below the price, or if one is above and one is below. If you're interested in diving into the details of the most likely price action in all of those configurations, I definitely recommend checking out the LDPM primer that goes into every configuration and orientation 
and gives the distribution of the change in the price that follows. It's pretty nifty. So now let's look at LDPM in real time to figure out what trading it would be like in real time. To do that, we're going to look at two examples. The first is going to be Bitcoin on the one minute and LDPM smooth is going to be purple and LDPM granular is going to be teal. Let's have a look. So right off the bat, we see that the price has crossed over both LDPMs, which is a near term bullish outlook. However, one of the interesting things we see is that as the price begins to fluctuate, LDPM granular doesn't change that much. It neither improves nor deteriorates. This indicates that liquidity isn't changing, and it seems that any price appreciation doesn't have enough liquidity or enough cooperation between the bid and the ask to really usher a, a continued price appreciation. Additionally, we see that LDPM smooth is moving towards the price, which means that it's attempting to cross over, which is also a bearish sign. So as the price continues to try to rise, we see that LDPM granular is indicating that liquidity is not getting better, which is what you would need if you want the price to keep going up. And eventually the bid will putter out of its liquidity and downside is to be expected. Exactly what we see here. Pretty nifty, huh? The cool thing about LDPM is that not only does it work on crypto, it works on individual equities, it works on futures, Forex, anything that has a price and volume. But that's not the only cool thing about LDPM. The really cool thing is that it can be used on multiple time frames to give you a multi time frame view of how liquidity is behaving on a stock. That is to say, is liquidity on the four hour interval good? but liquidity on the one hour is bad, which might indicate that liquidity is deteriorating or being drained from the stock. To get a view of this, let's look at SPY with four different intervals. Here we see SPY on four different intervals. The top left is four hours, the top right is one hour, the bottom left is 30 minutes, and the bottom right is five minutes. As expected, the five minute LDPM is much more active than the other LDPM metrics simply because the pool of liquidity that it is looking at is the specific interval or the five minutes, which can change pretty drastically as compared to the four hour or the one hour LDPM. But the benefit here is that we can see on four different time frames that SPY is looking pretty bearish. On the four hour, we see that overall it is a pretty bearish indication. We see that both LDPMs are above the price and even though LDPM granular is moving towards the price, which means it might be trying to cross over, which is a bullish indication. Nonetheless, right now, all of LDPM is indicating that there is poor liquidity and that downside is to be expected on the four hour intervals. Moving to the one hour, we see much of the same, except here on the one hour, which is a smaller sample size of the liquidity. It shows that maybe there is some improving liquidity because LDPM granular is moving away from the price, but this is also problematic because the price is declining. So if LDPM is moving away from a declining price, that means that liquidity is getting better on the downside, or it is less likely that a crossover event will occur, which is also bearish. We see the exact same thing on the 30 minutes, and we even see the crossover event occur where on the next interval, LDPM starts sampling the next candle, which is initially bullish. On the five minute, we see that both LDPMs are again above the price, and we see how active the LDPM granular can be as it constantly keeps tabs of the change in the price and the change in volume. I definitely recommend hanging out here for a minute and getting a glimpse and getting a feel for how LDPM works, especially because it can be beneficial if you want to trade it on a single interval, or if you want to trade it on multiple intervals to get a better view of how the liquidity on a stock is evolving. And here we see that LDPM granular on the five minute is moving well below the price, which indicates that it ha there is good liquidity on that price appreciation. However, we see that the price struggles to get up to LDPM granular. And oftentimes you will see that as the price approaches LDPM granular and bumps into it, it usually gets dropped back down. The benefit here is that if the price goes over LDPM granular on the five minute, then we can look over to the 30 minute to see if the price continues to appreciate. If both prices appreciate past LDPM, then we can move to the one hour, 
we can be confident that the price will continue to appreciate because we saw liquidity improve on the five minute and on the 30 minute timeframes. So that's all I have for you guys for LDPM. I hope this video was informative. LDPM is a pretty straightforward metric designed to measure liquidity in real time on a stock. When LDPM is above the price, things are pretty bearish. And when LDPM is below the price, things are pretty bullish. We can also monitor to liquidity on different time frames, in the, depending on our trading styles. If we need a more specific and granular view of liquidity, well, then we can use LDPM granular to get a real time liquidity assessment. Overall, I think LDPM is a pretty powerful and a pretty unique metric for every equity and future Forex and cryptocurrency basically that you could use. If it has price and volume, you can use LDPM. As I mentioned before, if you would like to read more about LDPM, I'll drop the link to the primer below, and I'll also drop the link to the LDPM on TradingView so that you can start using liquidity assessments in your trading. That's all I have for you guys today. Hope it was enjoyable. Till next time, happy trading.